God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you. Guys, thank you for tuning in. It's Halloween. How nasty. A day that's really associated with evil and wickedness. And we are hoping before this day is over, catching away. Uh, how awesome would that be? The dead in Christ rise first. And so many horror movies have things like the dead coming out of the earth. Um, anyways, so many things going on. I think of from 2 Timothy 3 verses 12. All those who, um, basically to paraphrase, all those who desire to live a godly life will suffer persecution. The last two days for me have felt just, just heavy, just another round of spiritual warfare. I, I would probably categorize it as just things kind of more in the, the mind, the thoughts, the just the heaviness there. It's crazy. Um, and we all have different things that we're, we're challenged with, but that's uh, what mine has been. So I haven't done a video in, in almost, uh, almost two days here. But anyways, what I want to be talking about is encourage you guys from the last chapter of Revelation and the theme, the idea of Jesus will come quickly. <clears throat> Now that phrase or, or similar language about Christ Jesus coming quickly in Revelation, it's mentioned three different times in the book. And the number three, um, I jotted down, signifies in Scripture divine wholeness, completeness. Uh, we think of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, God's sovereignty. Uh, we think of the resurrection on the third day. We also think of uh, in the seven days of creation, on the third day, the land, seas, um, <clears throat> plants, and trees were created. So kind of like our, our environment. And how awesome, you know, like um, just in this whole idea of coming quickly and the three times and all these things that three signify. Like when that day comes, when we are caught away um, regarding that third day of creation, it's like there we will be in our new creation, in our new abode. Uh, in the throne room with King Jesus uh, coming down where heaven will kind of merge with the new earth, the new Jerusalem. Uh, so exciting. So before we get into uh, this concept of uh, Jesus come quickly in a few verses from chapter uh, 22 of Revelation, we have uh, a few headlines I wanted to go over briefly here. So disregarding the apocalypse, which means the unveiling, so much more is uh, being unveiled. You know, when you think of Revelation, the book of Revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ to the Apostle John, written for all men to read. The whole point of prophecy is King Jesus. Uh, if you miss him, you miss the whole point. So we continue to pray for the unbelieving world, that people would be shook by the things that they see, and that they might draw near to Holy Spirit and start to put some puzzle pieces together and get it that uh, Jesus is God. Just like many people have said, he did uh, what the scriptures say he did. He did the sacrifice for my sin. I need him. I'll proclaim with my mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord. Forgive me. Save me. And if anyone hasn't done that today, um, confess your sin. Believe on Jesus. Definitely uh, do that today. Start reading some scriptures so that you can uh, draw near to that Holy Spirit and he will draw near to you. So as we see more unveiling, we think of uh, Jeremiah 49, 34 to 37, the prophecy of Elam will be destructed, a portion in Iran. That's coming. Uh, there's been news talk the last day and today talking about Iran is going to strike uh, imminently. And they have such strong language, like we'll hit you with something like you've never seen before. And so the, the question now is, will Israel strike preemptively? Um, so it's going to be another one of those weekends where we're really watching and uh, watching and waiting. And man, it's hard. Scripture so many times talks about being patient and waiting on the Lord. So as we also wait with these news headlines to kind of flesh out, we also need to just wait on the Lord. We're waiting on him. And we need, need to do that with patience and uh, just with our chips on Jesus, trusting him fully. I also saw uh, some headline about the ABC, on ABC, uh, a local affiliate ABC 
network news uh, affiliate in um, Pennsylvania, they had put on the bottom of their newscast like the election results showing that Kamala Harris was like a 52% to Trump's 47. So psychological operation, getting people to see that and be like, what? And then their little story behind it was we were just testing some things that were randomly generating numbers. Anyways, it's planting seeds of doubt so that when election time comes, whether church is here or raptured, um, there will be just, you know, the, the narratives and the questions and be like, well, we saw that thing 10 days ago and uh, they're, they're meddling, you know. It's going to be a lot of chaos and a lot of drama. But uh, we're going to stay near to Jesus if we're still here for that. We'll be all right. Uh, I also saw on Telegram uh, big signs in Israel saying Israel votes for Trump. And it just made me think, whichever way you lean, we need to be, you know, for King Jesus, not in any candidate. Because whoever is selected, um, you know, that, that's who the Lord is allowing in. And uh, the Lord is sovereign even over them. So when I see such things, I understand the sentiment behind it uh, seemingly. Donald Trump is, is way better than Kamala Harris. Um, I have suspicions about both of them. But anyways, just seeing that made me think of like, you know, the, the tribulation is for Israel. Unrepentant, unbelieving Israel still needs to be dealt with. They still need Messiah. Um, the most devout Jew, apart from faith on Jesus, you know, is lost. Uh, so it just kind of grieves me to see that and to see just the, the attention and the, the clamoring for a man and the desire for him and it's like golly if people could just be like that about king jesus this world would be so different i also see um and just wanted to uh, accentuate of course the matthew 24 deception there's so much whether it be with uh, the propaganda media news headlines uh, about the the uh, kamala harris results winning over trump and just all the psychological operations and jesus just saying see that you are not deceived so we need to take everything with a massive grain of salt and realize, like, is this so? What I'm hearing, what the so-called experts are saying, we must discern everything with a fine-tooth comb. All right, guys, I wanted to say that if you're enjoying this video, please quick hit the thumbs up on it, and please consider sharing this with uh, one person. All right, guys, from Revelation 22, let's just start at verse 1 here. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Just wanted to point out what I see here, uh, this water of life. When you think like water is the source of life, if you were fasting, like you could go a long time with no food, um, but you, you would definitely need water. Water is that which is life-giving. And it makes me think of you know, some of the judgments during uh, the tribulation, the latter part um, I think it's in the, the bowl judgments where um, the angels are pouring out the bowls and things are happening, <clears throat> including all water turning to blood. And it makes me think, yeah, like, well, that's the closing tail end. And these things are coming quickly. They <laughs> need that word quickly. And uh, for water to turn to blood shows like, you know, the, the life, the vitality, the sustenance is being snuffed out. Um, so anyways, just the... Um, the uh, difference of that pure river of water of life um, and it's clear as crystal crystal is super clear you can see right through it and so for water or you can it's clear as crystal it's so clear you can see what's in it how beautiful how pure how you want to just drink it like how cool is that imagery and it's proceeding out of the throne of God and of the lamb one and the same Jesus is the lamb Jesus is God and it's showing all life, all vitality, all um, sustaining power comes from the throne. The Lord is the author of life. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So from this water comes life, and then from this river of water of life, comes a tree again just showing that from the throne of God also how from the throne of God through this river of life it, it just gives life to everything including now talking about the tree here verse 3 and there shall be no more curse 
Yeah, amen. How great. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Again, the throne. More, more talk about this throne, this power, this yeah, the power that allows there to be no more curse. Yes. Guys, I hope this is pumping you up. Verse 4, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So we're going to see the faith of face of God. We are, we've been covered by the blood of Messiah. We are um, translated. We are given that glorified flesh. We can be in God's presence. We're going to see his face. When Moses only saw the, the back of the of Abba God, Yahweh, passing by, the Lord said, you can't look at my face, but I'll let you see me passing by. Now we get to see God in his face. And his name shall be in our foreheads. I'm not sure what that is. If you guys have any insight, uh, leave a comment that his name shall be in their foreheads. I don't know, but that's almost like, you know, that mark, that ownership. We are his. Oh, that's so great. Uh, it is ironclad. We can't be lost. We can't, you know, we can never be out of his presence at this point. Praise the Lord. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So it doesn't say there is no sun. It's just saying we don't need it. How cool, you know? The sun is pretty pretty sweet, but maybe we'll kind of notice it. But we're like, the light from uh, Messiah is, is sufficient. Um, and uh, they shall reign forever and ever, right? We're, we're reigning, ruling and reigning in the millennial kingdom. But then here, it's forever and ever. It's a continual thing. We're ruling and reigning over over sin, over destruction. Because no longer is it like the, the millennial kingdom where it's the unredeemed we're ruling and reigning over. Now it's like it's a perfected state. But we're ruling and reigning, I would suppose, over just sin and fallenness and death. Wow, that is so awesome. We've no, no one uh, in creation has ever had life devoid of those types of things, of sin and death. And, and we'll be ruling and reigning over that stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 6, And he said unto me, These saints are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Okay, we'll read uh, one of the quicklies here. Uh, we'll end here. Verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And also from Revelation 1, 3, blessed is he who reads and heeds what is written in this prophecy. The book of Revelation is important. It would be great if more pastors preached more about it. I hear that not a lot do. But there's great blessing in reading and hearing Revelation and heeding what it talks about. Right? And what does it talk about for us to heed? Um, there's many different things such as he who is um, like wicked, let him be wicked still and but he who is holy, be holy still. Uh, there, there's And there's these little pauses also where it kind of jumps out of the narrative and, and says, like, blessed is he who is clothed so he might not be found naked. Different things. But anyways, I was, uh, yeah, I was just struck. I was actually listening to a preacher named um, Keith Malcolmson from Limerick City, Ireland. Uh, he's got a church out there, and he was preaching on some of these things today, and they're really resounded uh, that pure river of life and glory and uh, again ending with, ending with verse 7 how Jesus will come quickly so we're looking today uh, being Halloween we're hoping the day's not over um, how, how fascinating and just awesome that would be but regardless when Christ Jesus comes that thing's going to be quick that's going to be like hitting the gas and, and the RPMs popping up it's going to be something that happens fast so guys stay ready uh, stay on your tiptoes and, and in Scripture, close to the Lord, integrating fasting, and you will finish your race strong. So I hope that uh, encouraged you guys. Put a smile on your face just thinking about the beauty and the purity and just being able to see how about God, King Jesus, in his face and, and not be destroyed, but to be ruling and reigning forever with Jesus in glory. That could be tonight. That could be tomorrow. Uh, keep hope, guys. This is exciting time to live in. Thanks for watching my video. Appreciate it, guys. I will see you next time. Jesus bless you.